Thank you, uh, Madam Master of Ceremony, for that uh, honor and privilege. Maria is my heroine today. <laughs> Maria, I watched you when you were on TV, I think, uh, is it two weeks ago? And I was impressed. I was challenged. That <clears throat> we have in our midst people with serious challenges who nonetheless refuse to be held back by those challenges. I would like my chief of staff to tweet the photograph I've taken with Maria. <laughs> and I want to appeal to parents and guardians of children with similar or more or similar challenges to know that it is not right to hold those people back at home. Let, let us give them an opportunity. Yes. They will amaze us in what they do. God has a special place for such a people. Yes. And we, ours is just to give them an opportunity. And you don't know what they can do. Thank you very much, Maria, for, for your effort and your your great achievement, I'm very, very impressed. The Chancellor of uh, Africa, Nasarini University, Dr. Jerry Lambert, the Chair of uh, the Board of Trustees and the University Council, Professor John Marangu, the members of the University Council, the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Stanel Ebebe, members of the University Senate, the teaching staff, <coughs> university management and faculty mem members, parents and graduates, Your Excellencies, the ambassadors here or represented here, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Good morning. Good morning, morning graduates. I want to thank the management of the University of Nazarene University for giving me the privilege of coming to join you in this auspicious occasion of the 21st Congregation of the University of Africa, University, Nazarene University. It is a tremendous honor to me to address you young graduates. It reminds me of my day when I sat in a, a similar place. I know this is a, a great day for you I'm very happy to join you as you celebrate this important milestone in your life's journey. This is a momentous day in your lives, one that you will never, you will never forget. Congratulations. I would also like to recognize the parents, the guardians, and your teachers for the huge investment they are put into your education that has enabled you to be here today. Ladies and gentlemen, I note that close to 900 of you are gradu graduating today. As you leave this magnific uh, magnificent ceremony, I'm sure you are filled with fears and uncertainties. 
what awaits you outside the classroom with all its predictabilities, where all the important activities are signposted through timetables and syllabuses and term dates. You must now navigate through the next phase of your life, armed only with the strength of character that your good schooling has bestowed upon you. The theme of today's uh, event is indeed poignant. Ignite your future. In a very distinct manner, today's ceremony provides the demarcation that separates you, your previous life, and the future that years of education and mentoring have been preparing you for. Having done so well and succeeded in your academic pursuits, you must be asking yourselves what it will take to ensure that you score similarly well in the really world that awaits you out there. Let me tell you, it is within your capabilities to ignite the future. But it will take a particular personality to do this. First, you must dare dream. It takes both faith and foresight to realize a future. Great revolutionaries and everyone else who has had a significant impact on their society have one thing in common. They don't just believe what they see. Rather, they see what they believe. Dr. Abdul Kalam, the great Indian scientist and the political leader, once said that a, a dream is not what you see in your sleep, but something that doesn't let you sleep. Igniting the future will involve quite some dreaming. It is living in a place that men are yet to explore and exploit. The power to make it real is in you. Along with this, you will find that adopting the four virtues of great achievers, summarized as the four A's, aspiration, attitude, ability, and action, will make your forthcoming endeavors a joyous journey. Great inspirations are pathed by aspirations incubated in attitude, enforced by ability, and realized through action. Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps I'm making it, uh, it sound too easy, and you might be asking yourself, is, this, is there really a formula for success? I will answer that question with a yes and a no. The no comes from the fact that, unfortunately, our society is not fair. Our best efforts will sometimes go unrewarded or even unnoticed, and the field where you will be playing next is far from being level. There would be times when, where you come from, how you speak, and who you know will be more important in ensuring your success than the anvil of your hard work. That's the sad bit of our society. But I'm not here to tell you how you will not succeed or how difficult it will be. So let me answer with a yes. 
there is indeed a formula for success, one that has worked for ages. It begins with the recognition that God is in charge of our affairs, that God is in charge of your destiny. If you listen to him keenly, he will guide you through the limbrats limb of life, heaping uh, blessings upon you until your cup overflows with accomplishments. It will not always be about wealth or power or even popularity, but a life that is blessed and shines brightly for all to see. The second equation in the formula for success combines discipline and hard work. Let me tell you, even though your lecturers can today attest to how talented you are, without discipline, you will find it very difficult to turn your talent into a currency that buys you success. We have seen many times immense talent that is squandered through undisciplined drinking, drug abuse, and shameless trance, along with many other behavior traits that guarantee failure. Along with the discipline, you will need a good measure of ethics and clearly spelled out values. If you are lucky enough to have found a place for Christ in your life, you have a head start here. For your value system is already well defined. The third element is a generosity of spirit so that you may you are selfless in your pursuit of success. Are you doing it for yourself alone? Or is there a place on the high table of your success for your family? The people who sacrifice so much to see you get here today. Your neighbors, your community, and your country. More importantly, your parents and guardians. If the only thing you care about is buying that flash car and living in the swanky estate, who will lead the fight to make Kenya a better place for your children and our grandchildren? Once again, Maria, thank you for reminding us that we need to fight corruption in our country. Young people, let me mention that corruption is literally killing this great nation. Those of us, the old foggies, have not succeeded in doing much about it. I want to appeal to you, come out and ignite the future. Come out and say no to corruption, and you will have done Kenya proud, proud indeed. Along with the discipline, you will need a good measure of ethics and clearly spelled out values. Am I repeating that? Yes. As you begin your journey into the future, there are a few things you need to remember. One, you need to set your goals clearly so that they serve as the signposts on your road to success. Before today, success was merely defined by what you scored in your cuts or the end of terms 
uh, at the end of semester exam. Now you will need to draw a clear picture of what success means to you. What does success look like? How will you know when you, are gra you have grasped it? Plapo uh, Picasso is better known for his priceless art, but his views about goal setting are clearly invaluable. And I quote, our goals can only be reached through a vehicle of a plan in which we must vivantly believe and upon which we must vigorously act. There is no other route to success. I could talk about goal setting until the cows come home, but let me uh, not do that. Just take it from me that without clear goals, your chances of finding success are greatly compromised. Secondly, it is time uh, to accept the immortal words of uh, this, this letter. Take kindly the counsel of years, gracefully surrendering the things of your, of your youth. You know, you now need to start looking provisional. Did you hear me? You now need to start looking provisional. Pack away your college wardrobe <laughs> under the T-shirt collection, unless the career you seek is among the creatives of uh, the text. If you are headed to the National Theater or Hype, you can keep the T-shirts. <laughs> to get the job you want, you will need to look the part. Even beyond your wardrobe, you must create a professional image around. How do, you, how do your social uh, networking sites look like? If the backpack is your profile picture on Facebook or WhatsApp, you might consider exchanging it with a briefcase. <laughs> if your most popular posts are from your Friday night escapades, <laughs> trade those with a clear uh, quote from the motivational book you just read. In other words, it is time to get a makeover. While your expectations will change as you graduate today, so will others' expectations of you. Finally, you need to update your CV. And you need to start looking for a job. It bothers me that many of our young, people, young graduates forget that finding a job requires as much effort as everything else they have done successfully. It is as if they expect the job to fall on their laps from the skies. Many of them just recoil in furious indignation, complaining that there are no jobs for them Yet, they cannot tell you how many application letters they have sent out, or even how often they have visited the, the numerous job sites <laughs> that are so clearly accessible, even from their phones. Finding a, a job is, 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 a, is hard work. Send out those applications right, left, and center. Prepare hard for interviews and wait for the good news. In the meantime, try to be useful. Volunteer with your church or any other community you are close to. Offer your services to the local school. Before I joined the university, I taught in my primary school. When I was in university, I used to teach 
in one of the schools in my home. And I, 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 get, I got invaluable uh, experiences from there. Look for unpaid internship near where you live. Those could easily be your employers. Start a small business or help out a relative already doing business, even if it is selling mandazi by the roadside. Many successful graduates have done very awkward jobs as they waited for the right one to come. Set aside time to do some reading. It is a pity that most young people spend most of their time serving internet entertainment sites. There is nothing wrong with entertainment young people. We all need some light moments, but not all the time. In other words, do something and anything useful that keeps you busy and far away from mischief. You will not be able to ignite your future sitting idle in your bedroom. You are not going to ignite your future in idle talk all the time, although at times you need time with friends to talk about everything and nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, you are fortunate to have uh, studied in such a distinguished university, one that is home to many firsts. Af African Nazarene University is the first chartered private university in Kenya. It was the first university in the region to appoint a female vice-chancellor. <laughs> For start, Professor Marang. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Professor Mar Marangu is uh, a pleasant lady to speak to. This morning, I was asking uh, who is the landlord, or who is the landlady in their home. In my home, I'm told I'm a tenant. <laughs> and she was happy to hear that, by the way. Yeah. It, has been, it has been charting the course in the education sector and has set a veritable tradition, that is this University of Excellence, as proven by successful uh, registered as proven by successes registered by many uh, of past graduates, from journalism to entrepreneurship and scientific excellence, your university has uh, given the world many achievers to be proud of. You are among those. It is encouraging to note that you have had the benefit of a unique Christian foundation that separates you from the rest. You need to be proud of that, young people. I am what I am today because I am a Christian, and I make no apologies about that. Wow. This single attribute places you, as African Nazarene University graduates, in a good place as you seek to ignite the future. As beneficiaries of such a holistic education that integrates the Christian faith with practical training, the society expects you to apply your spiritual bringing in assuming a position of peer role models who will help us confront many of the social ills that bedevil our society today. You know what I'm talking about. We are grappling with the challenges of intolerance, corruption, tribalism, political uh, hooliganism, drug and uh, substance abuse, and many others. 
you may have been told that the country is flooded with accountants, engineers, lawyers, journalists, and even doctors. And I'm sure you are wondering whether or not there is any job for you out there. That may be so, but let me tell you one thing. Employers are looking for efficient young people with whom who take time and prepare, and prepare well in whatever they do. Ignite your future in the new ideas you have learned in this university as you go out to serve in the public. But as you give your ideas, take care, young people, don't rubbish <laughs> the manner in which uh, the, some of us, the old foggies, are doing things out there. Be tactful, and you will inject new ideas that will change the way things are done in our country. Most young people are too casual in what they do. I'm talking as an employer, please listen to me. Employers are looking for young people who are passionate. You have heard the, there is an English term these days known as passionometer. You heard it? Yes, employers are looking for passionate young people. Most importantly, employers are desperately looking for women and men of integrity, people who they can trust enough to go on a holiday for a month and still find their businesses intact when they return. One thing I cherish in my life, I don't know about you, is people placing trust in me. When I was in private practice, I cherished the idea that clients would trust me with their funds. One day, if, I may, if you may allow me to, to tell you this, just before my partner flew out of the country for a, a well-deserved holiday, it was necessary for him to sign for me some blank checks. Blank checks to the client's account. As he was doing that, I asked him whether he remembered that my home is near the Kenya-Tanzanian border. <laughs> you already know what I'm going to say. <laughs> near the Kenya-Tanzanian border. And I asked him whether, as I said, look, Praveen, do you realize that with a stroke of a pen, I could clean the, their client's account and cross up the border into Tanzania and leave you facing the police? You know what he said? But David, I know you cannot do that as he was signing more of those checks. <laughs> For me, that kind of trust in me is much more greater than any money you can give me. Young people, you will uh, fry high if people, especially your employer, can trust you, absolutely. Make them trust you. That is the only way to ignite your future, what talking about. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank, once again, the university management and the entire Africa Nazarene community for what you have done to your sons and daughters gathered here today. To the parents, I urge you to release these young people to face the world. Just guide them. Don't hold them back. It is their turn to move on. If they need you, they will seek your advice. They have come of age, and they are well-educated, well-mentored, and fully prepared for the task ahead, Cleaning, clinging to your son or daughter. At this stage, is not helpful anymore. Let them go out there and light up the way to a great Kenya. 
I hope, young people, that you will not disappoint your parents. Once again, congratulations, and I want to wish you God's blessings as you go out into society and ignite the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>